Okay, wonderful. Hello. Uh, real quick, just so that everyone gets hype again, because that's important. It's important that we maintain morale in these dark times. When I say vampire, you say north. Vampire. Yes! Oh, we got so many norths so fast. Oh, we did it, gang. We did it. Humans, <laughs> what a trial this has been. We started streaming at 12. It is uh, getting... It's 20 to 2 now. And it's taken this long to really... Uh, get the stream to function. I'm happy to keep going if you're happy to keep going. Yeah, you're all about to meet- people who haven't been to um, my Twitch channel before are about to meet uh, Nightbot the Scourge of my Twitch chat. It's Sunday, let's go! Hell yeah, that's what I think. Alright, have I had lunch? I'm sure I ate at some point. Yeah, I'm good to go. I'm fine. I've got my my little my little uh, movie cup of water. We solid. Ah, let's do this. So, ha 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 ha. Where's my map so that I can see it with my eyes? There it is. There it is. Ha ha ha. I'm so excited. Why is this so exciting? So. What were we talking about? Uh, should I do a little brief rundown for people who are just joining us on Twitch or for people who might watch this later on Twitch? Because jumping between YouTube and Twitch is a drama and a half. So, uh, the quick rundown is this is a campaign discovery stream. We look at the map and people decide what do we want to talk about. And then we look at that thing and we ask, uh, we ask questions about it. Because asking questions is how you discover what you already know about something. Um, and so this is the Forgotten North that was chosen today. Uh, we've been talking about it. It is a sort of section of my map, which I should zoom out on real quick for anyone who hasn't seen the full map. Dun, 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 that's the full map. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Um, but we're looking specifically at the Forgotten North, which is just above the Faeacre. The The way that this has worked out is that um, if you're traveling south to north through the Faeacre, or probably also um, into the Faeacre from like west to east or whatever, um, you won't make it through the forest. You'll end up either in Fairy or you'll never make it through, you'll end up walking in circles or going back the way that you came without turning around, things like that. Uh, so the result of this has been, sorry about this, the result of this has been that um, the people north of the Faeacre have kind of gotten cut off from the rest of the world and what we know about it so far is that uh, some vampire or vampires have swooped in and taken control of the region, taken advantage excuse me, taking advantage of the way in which it has been cut off um, and now sort of rule it with an iron grip. Um, you can travel from north to south through the Faeacre, um, that works perfectly well, but very few people have managed to do that since the vampire has taken control. They've, they've come in, they've kind of stopped, they've stopped as many people from escaping as they can. They've taken out uh, any powerful magic users so that people can't escape and call for help or can't oppose them and take them down. And now we've just had a number of generations of people sort of living under the thumb of this vampire. Um, and we're d that's, that's the main stuff, isn't it? Have I forgotten things that were important? Nightbot doesn't like emotes. <laughs> yep, got the point across. Cool. I'll take that. That's it. I'll take that as, as the answer forever. Um, so, we've been... Uh, we, we just managed to get to the point where we were... Um, we were asking whether we wanted to talk about the vampire first or the people of the region first. Uh, this is this is a place possibly called Rum. So on the map it says the Forgotten North because that's a cool, intriguing name. But um, we discussed the fact that if you're living outside of that region, you've just forgotten about it, so you don't have a name for it. Um, whereas if you are from there, you still call it by whatever it's called. And the name is possibly Rum, but that's not... That's neither here nor there. It's not locked in. Nothing's ever locked in. So, um, people decided that they wanted to talk about the people of the region of Rom. 
Uh, and we were looking at the structure of the, the typical thing, what I do, social, political, economic, religious, or military groups that people um, might associate with. We're going to avoid looking at economic groups just because we did a lot of that in the previous couple of streams when we were talking about Druff and Dirick. Um, so we're looking at other possibilities. I did mention the idea, there's, there's a very... Um, simple idea to go with in the idea of a resistance that are trying to fight back against the vampire or vampires or other badens um but that uh it would be interesting how that has to differentiate from other resistance groups that already kind of exist within my setting or whether it is different from those or whether it's attached to them whether it's an arm of those groups um those sort of questiones so, hit me with some of them ideas. Some people say start political. Um, do we want to start political? Here's, here's a question. When it comes to the people, how much political power do they have if they're in a situation where they're being ruled over by a, a tyrant vampire? This, for anyone who did miss the, the first part of the stream on YouTube, we, <laughs> or just couldn't pay attention because it was a nightmare, um, we did discuss um, the the way in which this section of my campaign world would be a good place where you could just drop in Strahd. Um, so to a certain degree that is something to keep in mind but also let's overrule that and just uh, put a bunch of our own stuff in there because that's what we like doing, that's fun. Um, so would the, the people get any, I, I'm gonna say humans sometimes when I just mean you know player races that are common basically. Um, would they have much political power or would that mostly belong to the people who've taken over? Hmm, I don't know, Varys. What do, pe what do people think? Do we want the vampires to be known as being in charge and kind of uh, controlling uh, with an iron fist or do we want it to be more of a secret Illuminati thing? I mean part of me does think that um, with this region so cut off from the rest of the world um, you know they they wouldn't need to be particularly secretive about it. Um, if they swooped in really quickly took out all of the most powerful people very quickly then you know there's that question of what can the people even do to stand up to these vampires even though they're super like in your face about it um and of course the answer to that is form a mob but whether people do form a mob or not you know sometimes human sometimes humans in the real world we just don't form mobs when we should sometimes <laughs> that's a strong stance to take citizen liaison for the vampire interesting I don't have chat up on the recording, do I? So I should be saying people's names out loud. Who was that that said citizen liaison? I've lost you. I've lost you. You always see vampires as tyrannical. Go against type. Ah, but sometimes I love feeding into the cliche. Oh, isn't it sometimes just the most fun thing in the world to do that? What? Nightbot's going insane! What? Is it because you swore? Like, what did you do? Because I'm pretty sure swearing's allowed in chat. I don't know how to fix it. Um, so I can't help with this. It does- I know it, it probably doesn't like a lot of caps, and it probably doesn't like a lot of motes. It, it doesn't like a lot of emotes. And I know that it doesn't allow links. So those are three things to avoid in chat if you don't want to incur the wrath of Nightbot. Um, but on the whole, I cannot help you. I am powerless. This is not my domain. Oh, Nyessa, friend of the channel. Um, I like the idea of vampires being in clear, direct control, but with really strong propaganda about how they're so benevolent, helping the people, etc., etc. Love that. Big fan of some propaganda. Oh, 
Oh, they kind of made the powerful people in the region vampires or ghouls under them so that the people see their leaders as vampires now, but don't know uh, of the higher shadow government. That is a possibility, Rorik. Here's a question about vampires. Because to a certain degree, I, I watch vampire things like Castlevania, and I'm like, if you want this person on side, why don't you just turn them into a vampire? And I think that it comes down to the fact that they don't want there to be too many vampires, because once there are other vampires, they can sort of vie for power against you. They have the same strengths as you do. They know your weaknesses, all those sorts of things. Um, and so that seems to come back time and time again as a reason for vampires to just kill people or, you know, set up these particular whatever things they set up to defend themselves rather than just vamping people is that thing of okay but I want to be the only one though vampires have that little taste of narcissism I actually watched I rewatched um the Hugh Jackman Van Helsing recently with my father and my sister it is still bad but I still love it um and at some point we got to that that scene it's it's such a good moment where um they're at the like the ball the masquerade ball at uh, at Dracula's summer palace and it's full of all these vampires dancing and they're like circus performer vampires and stuff they're all vamp everyone there is a vampire and Shannon pointed out uh she was like that vampire is riding a unicycle that vampire had to learn to ride a unicycle and I maintain that that no the more likely scenario is that someone vamped an entire circus so that they could get uh vampire circus performers because no vampire would risk ever falling down while trying to learn something like riding a unicycle that's my theory is that vampires are narcissists and i understand that what i just said contradicts the other thing i've been saying about vampire narcissism that they want to be the only one but uh you know being able to hold two contradictory thoughts in your head at once and know them both to be true is uh is an important thing about being human Yeah, if they, yeah, 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 yeah. Real Needle says, if they prove useful, they may be deemed worthy of such an ultimate blessing. That's true. And, and I think a vampire loves the power of being able to deem you worthy or unworthy. They get to say whether you've earned it yet or not. Um, yeah. Ooh, vampirism in the propaganda society. Could even be set up as the ultimate reward for peasants to aspire to that's a really good point um you know that idea of like you never will be chosen to become a vampire but if you work really hard there's that idea somewhere in the back of your head that maybe maybe you'll be seen you'll be the one who's deemed um who's deemed worthy of that kind of level of power which of course is not um propaganda that would work on everybody a lot of people probably don't want to be vampires. Um, but having said that, it would work on some. Yep, yep, we've got... Is that Levi? Um, also, all the tropes are around vamps as royalty. So the tyranny and not wanting competition is baked in that's cw bunny uh vampirism equals capitalism says pats says zero zero seven one nine zero pats it's a catchy name That's true. That's true. Real Needle again. I mean, if there's enough lying about what vampirism really is, what it entails, then it could be appealing. Who doesn't want to live forever? Mm. And everybody wants to rule the world. That got real deep. That got real deep. I can't go deep. Deep voices are hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah robin winghood says me i don't want to live forever i think a lot of us in the real world who've thought about it a lot don't want to live forever um but there is that pervasive 
there's there's clearly enough cultural evidence that for a long time throughout human history there has been a desire for immortality um and it's so interesting to me that we've lost that like it seems like nearly completely we've lost that we haven't lost our fear of death but we have gained a fear of immortality um yeah maybe not maybe i'm wrong twilight doesn't super have a fear of immortality it probably should i've been rereading twilight it probably should have a fear of immortality <laughs> creed says i thought about it a lot still down <laughs> That's true. Um, Unsen says, if vampire rule has been for generations, then you could just shape society to your will. Um, and of course, you, you have to do it little by little, but you do get to slowly change it. Like, as, as generations go by, I was saying earlier that, um, that the people here would still know about the outside world. Um, I think it's very difficult to wipe that kind of a thing from the memory of, um, of people. But having said that, with every generation that dies, you can change their mind about stuff just a little bit. You can change how they think about things just a little bit. You can um, warp it one way or the other. So Eternal Night in the North? Ooh, that's fun! I almost didn't read your name. It's uh, Olgalanoth. You sound like a demon. Um, that's a fun idea. Do we want Eternal Night in the North? Do we just want it to be super cloudy? Is it, I mean, is it far enough north for it to be having very long dark winters? It's possible. I mean, it seems quite close to, um, to some grassy greeny areas, so maybe not, but it's a possibility. Hi, Levi. Also a friend of the channel. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering. Rich Hill uh, is whether the vampires already were drawn to the north because there was less daylight up here um, to contend with. Um, not much sun for many months of the year is a possibility. And then once they realize how cut off it is from the rest of the world because of the Faeacre, because you can only travel south through the forest, um, that would just be like for the pickings you know what i mean um and i don't think i look at my map and i think about my world setting and i'm i don't i don't think of many other places where i where vampires would be and i mean part of that is um this tendency i have towards what what did what are they called in birthright on shaylin that idea of like it's the vampire um i don't think i would do that with a vampire actually i think that it it you know, part of the vampire thing is the fact that they can create more vampires. I think that is important to um, the mythos of a vampire. And so I wouldn't do that on Jalen thing of, you know, this is the one. But I would probably still have it be like, this is the one place where that is happening. Uh, which is a little bit similar to kind of how I run goblins. Um, but... Yeah, I think I think this is it. This is the place where the vampires are. I think you are unlikely to find them elsewhere, and if you did, it would be a very dramatic moment. What caused the Faker to occur? asks Osak the goat. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there was anything that happened or if it just has always been that way. Or um, if maybe the planes shift over time. Um, but as far as, you know, memory is concerned, for time in memoriam, uh, that's where the Faeaker has been. That's, yeah. Nimblefire asks, would they have the general populace live at night as well? That's a good question. What do people think about that? Because 
to a certain degree, I think these people have to be miserable and sad because they're, you know, ruled by vampires in the frozen uh, dark north. But having said that, uh, people need daylight to be healthy <laughs> and to keep going. So, hmm. Dwarves don't, though. Mm. Oh my gosh, Nightbot is still telling you all the sound is bad. Nightbot needs to be stopped. I'll deal with that when we're not streaming things. I've just had... We've had too many dramas to stop again, but... I will make a note to myself to shut up Nightbot for next time. Um... Makes farming unfeasible. That's a really good point. I think the vampires would want people to still be running farms. Uh, Clomo. Clomo 101. And I mean, if we do have the vampires having to maintain, um, you know, having to maintain control during the day, that still gives us, that gives us room for some groups of humans who are working with the vampires, which a number of people were interested in before. Um, and it gives us room for, like, w when people can start working out how to escape. Because when, when you get these sort of, you know, regimes people want to escape from, as far as my, my little understanding goes, um, you do have this constant, like, work to escape from some people. Not from anyone, not from everyone, you know what I mean? But, like, there's always someone somewhere working out the the weak points you know if if you're in east germany you know you're finding the weak points in the fence um and one of the weak points in this fence this metaphorical vampiric fence uh would be daytime uh and the fact that the vampires would have to rely on others in order to enforce their rule during the day Ooh, robin winghood is suggesting that there's an enforced curfew which is interesting to me. That is an interesting concept. And I, I like how it plays with the rest of the stuff that we're talking about. Now, yes, I'm talking about a curfew as well. Human movement is restricted while the vampires are active. Oh, that's interesting. Frozen Scarecrow suggests that the night is a sacred time for a vampire, so if you get caught out and you're not a vampire, then it's basically heresy. And th there's an edge of that that I really like. Um... Okay, interesting. Interesting. Uh, I've scrolled back up to find sort of the first half of what Robin uh, Winghood was saying. And they've said, uh, I think I could dig the opposite times, like the vampires could use their own absence to sort of make up whatever they want about themselves because no, what, nobody's awake to contradict them. And that's a really good point if we're leaning into that propagandist kind of regime. And I, I do have a question about um, to what degree did the vampires control people directly? And to what degree are people just controlled by fear? So, like, um, if, if the major sort of center of civilization is directly under the thumb, but then you've got these other little spots um, of, of people, you know, little villages or whatever, of woodsmen, what have you, and they're kind of physically out of reach for the most part. So it's like, why wouldn't they all just leave and ask for help? Um because they have the most opportunity to get away. So then maybe there's that idea of the vampires coming out sporadically and hitting those places hard and fast, um, just from time to time to remind them that even though they're not immediately present, they can still reach them, they can still affect them, they can still come for them. Um, I think if we were to go along those lines, then that means that there must be some kind of a, a spy system in place. Um, so then at that point we start getting to the, you know, what are the, the ravens that Saruman uses to spy on people or, um, in the Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, you know, you've got the, the secret police wolves, but you've also got the, um, the, the phrase, some of the trees are on her side, you know, I like that idea of there being 
sort of a everyone knows that there are spies but no one knows what form that takes that could be a lot of fun um does that clash with some of my i have secret police in a in a major city elsewhere um does that clash i don't know if it would the secret police in the other place are very um very sort of re-education-y um you know there is no war in Basing say um Whereas these ones, I think, I think it's less secret police. I think it's more spies. I think it's more people feeding information so that the vampires would know where is going to cause trouble. <laughs> Wait, what's a point Game of Pawns? It just disappeared. Where is it? Game of Pawns or Owns, but with a P, you, you know what I mean? Uh, what about an underground railroad organization, which isn't confrontational towards the vampire regime, but helps people escape? Big fan. Um, and I like the idea of that in that you can have people who are doing it out of genuine benevolence, and you can also have people who are using that as a way to make money. Um, easily, easily you can have both of those things existing, where it's like, here's this person who's helping people escape, but they're doing it for a price. Kind of, um, oh, here's a weird specific reference samson in dragon age 2 um his character is so different in the third game and i don't really understand how it happens but in the second game he's um an ex-templar he's uh, addicted to lyrium if you don't play dragon age none of this will make sense and i apologize but but he's helping mages escape because that's why he got fired in the first place was that he was kind of helping mages escape this really terrible situation that they were in um, and now he still does that, but he does it for money. Because if he doesn't do it for money, then every single mage will come to him for help and he won't be able to help anyone. Because um, he'll get shut down. Give me a second. I think things are falling over over here and I don't want them to because that would be bad. Um, so yeah, that kind of a, an underground railroad situation is a neat setup. And a great way for um, to introduce players to the region, you know, if they're having to like get in contact with some of these people who can help um you know get in or get out although would they be able to help people get in if you can't get in from the south to the north interesting urkin says uh could the spies be unwilling pawns with the vampires holding something dear to them as collateral sort of deal yes that absolutely could be the case. I like that idea. I think that probably would often be the case. Curtis asks, are there ever going to be cataclysmic changes like something unleashing the vampires into the south? Or will some form of other wars happen? Um, yes, but not with the vampires. I don't think that there would be a cataclysmic event that would unleash the vampires. I don't think the vampires are interested in further conquest. I think they've got their chunk of land, they've got their, um, you know, subordinate uh, citizens, their, their plebeians, and I think they're quite happy with their setup, and um, they would like to maintain the status quo, which I suppose falls back into that, uh, I should have been talking about this the whole time, my, my central tension of this world, which last time people didn't know what I meant. So Matt Colville talks about the central tension of a game world, and he says um, that it's because uh, you want drama, and drama is conflict and resolution, and he always does that. Um, and basically he's talking about you want a couple of themes on which, or, or dichotomies or sort of those sort of setups um, on which you can sort of base a lot of the adventures and things that are happening in your setting. So I keep coming back to the concept of um, tradition versus innovation in my game. Uh, and for this setting, I think the vampires are representing tradition, not only because longevity is very easy to tie to the concept of tradition, but also because they want things to stay the same. They don't want things to change. They don't, they don't want to change anything themselves even because they're like, we've got such a sweet setup. We don't want to risk it. Um, so the idea of change and innovation is sort of an anathema to throw in a little vampiric peeps reference um to what the vampires are trying to accomplish here yep 
You never know if it's an animal or a vamp, says Creed. That's true. If we get traditional. Magnus asks, uh, well, Magnus Mendax asks, uh, are vampires the only powerful force who have a chokehold on the region? Is there another power or are there, or are the vampires united and unopposed? I think they for sure have the most power in the region. I think there probably are other forces that crop up here and there. I think the vampires are united. I like that we've kind of settled on the idea that there are there is more than one vampire here. It's not just one strad like being. It's it's not Dracula. It's you know it's kind of a grouping. Um, I'm I'm vibing that, um, and I think that's how a lot of us are naturally talking about it at the moment, which which tells us what we already know. Without you see, this is why we ask questions because we deep down already know what we want. Um, so I think they have most of the power. I think the danger for them comes from the fact that as a group, you know, it's it's a little bit like Survivor as, you know, the reality show in terms of at any point, a number of them could group together and take out the minority. You know, uh, you, you could have your little Carmilla coup if we go back to Castlevania and they turn on you and they take a couple of other vampires with them and then they take power and they share more power between fewer vampires and that can happen again and again and again and if we lean on this idea of vamp vampiric narcissism you know that it's it's an unstable element it's going to keep going until it it's finally led um but yeah 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 I don't know, I think there are, because I want to lean on this region being sort of inner strati, I do think that there should be more ghostly stuff, I think that there should be room for lycanthropes, I think, um, to a degree, undead like zombies, I'm not sure where I stand on that. I don't, if I, because if I want to include zombies at any point, I don't want them to be thrall zombies, you know what I mean? I want them to be kind of an accident I think so I'm not sure where they would fit in here but um yeah how often or much do vampires need to drink humans to survive says Aldruin that's a good question I'd have to think it must be relatively frequently but they probably don't have to drink a whole human you know what I mean like they could just dip in like you could have a human and keep them on tap and lasting for like a week still tasting fresh um yeah i there's, there's a little discussion going on between a number of people in the chat um, about how vampires kind of think of the fae. Um, which I think people are making some good points that the fae are so otherworldly. Where a vampire was once human. And I think that's significant to the, the role of a vampire in a story. Is that there's this echo of humanity there. Or this this long dried out memory of what it was to be human. So they kind of base things on a very um, human sort of ground and build from there. Whereas Fey are so not human. Like they can look like us sometimes, but they just don't think like that in any way. They don't think like humans in any way, in any capacity. Um, which is why there's so much room for miscommunication and there's so much room for um, impoliteness and there's so much room for Faye to take advantage of words and contracts and promises. I think that's because they think so differently to people. Whereas a vampire, you know, they've, they've developed this inhumanity over time, but it's all building from a basis of... Um, human understanding of the world 
So I don't know what that tells us about how they relate to one another, but... Um, ah, uh, Lelling says, can vampires drink fae? And the answer is no, because how would they catch one? They had, they, they couldn't catch one. Um, and particular, like, not just because they would be traveling north to south and therefore would never make it into the fae wild. Um, I, we, we have gotten sidetracked talking about the vampires, even though we wanted to talk about the people. So we've got some ideas, we've got this, um, this concept of people who are escaping, we've got a concept of people who are running a uh, an underground railroad. Um, do we want an active um, resistance that fights the vampires? Because at this point, I feel like we're leaning a little bit away from that. We're leaning towards the idea of um, people who are a little bit more resigned to the situation or who are sort of figuring that the only help that's going to work is from the outside. Um, but is that false? Are there people here who are actively trying to kill the vampires? Maybe there are. Um, we have spies who might be people who are, who are people who have, you know, family or, you know, something held over them that's forcing them to work for the vampires. Um, mm -hmm. only like one of those is an actual group though, isn't it? is the Underground Railroad. Hmm. And that, to a certain degree, I, I don't know where you'd put it in the, um, in the S-P-E-R-M. I can no longer in stream say the full word because things go badly. Um, but in that setup, where does that even go? Does that land on mil- uh, not military, political? Maybe. It might be a political stance because they're, you know, resisting this, um, this regime to a degree, helping people escape. Social, yeah, maybe. Oh, Bacon Burrito suggests that there is resistance, but it's not looking good at the moment. That would be fair, that would be fair. Not the main character says, yeah, if it was active, they would just get murdered. Yeah. Lots of people backing up that idea. I, I think I agree with that. Drek Fletch asks, do the spies create dissidents in order to find people who would be rebels? Maybe. Yeah, Rory M. Gal says, uh, what about a group of people who voluntarily work for and lord the vampires for what they do for the people? Well, the propaganda has to be coming from somewhere. And again, I can't see vampires doing the hard work, you know? So who's making the propaganda? Who's, um, are they doing it via posters? Is there some kind of a printing press? Mm -hmm. Um, are they hand making posters? Are there, are there town criers who are sort of town criers? What a concept. Um, who are just, you know, spreading this news. Are there orators who, uh, you know, tell of the good deeds of the vampires, um, in the town square on their soapbox? Um, yeah. Who's running that propaganda machine? Cause someone has to be, for, for propaganda to be effective. Someone's, it's got to be organized, you know? Someone's got to be running that. They can't rely on word of mouth, because word of mouth tends towards, you know, the resistance. That's kind of just what happens. Is this a this is a uh, latchbox, and they say, is this a Lord Veterinary situation, making sure to always be in charge of his assassination attempts? I like it. <laughs> I 
Okay. Apollo suggests, do the rebels maybe preserve old books and political writings to try and prevent the vampires from destroying the memory of a time when they were free? I think that's a good idea. I think that's good. Um, has anyone ever watched the K-drama Rookie Historian? Hmm? Um, it kind of, it's a, it's a period piece. And uh, the idea of it is that there were these figures um, who were historians who would just follow around the the king and they would write down everything that happened so that there was nothing secretive going on there was always someone there writing it down so that people could know the truth um and it didn't work exactly like that but yeah that's kind of the premise of the whole thing um and then during the series uh the king is kind of and his evil vizier are uh, sending out people to collect and burn books. And they're burning a, a number of books, but they're doing it all so that they can cover up that they're burning a specific book, which tells a piece of history um, in which the king kind of usurps the throne and they don't want anyone to know about it. So they're burning a bunch of books to disguise the burning of this one particular thing. So the point of that is that I like that show. I enjoyed watching it. And um, so I like your idea as well. <laughs> Uh, or Gullinoth says the church's vampire run? Almost certainly. I agree with that very, very much. Um, an interesting thing in my setting, I don't know if I've, I've ever actually said it in a video, and I should have because it's been relevant multiple times and people have been um, very confused because a lot of people disagree with me on this, but in my setting it is very significant that the gods are not a certainty. Um, you know, I think that that is, for, for my homebrew setting at least, um, it is a significant thing that paladins or clerics are putting their faith in something that isn't proven. And I think it's important for alignment and morality as well, that idea of, um, you know, once the gods are absolute, then at a certain point it's like, why is anyone being evil? Like, unless you can guarantee immortality, why are you doing anything evil? Because you know, like, it, anyway, it doesn't matter. But I think the more important thing for me is this idea that, you know, a cleric or a paladin is, 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 it's faith. It's not just allegiance. It is a belief um, in something that is uncertain. Um, and so how does that look when, a vampire hijacks that and what does their twist on a religion become um yeah interesting 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 i mean at the very least in terms of the current campaign that's running in this world um and the religion that the cleric kind of we we talked out um at some point during that we were talking about the idea of where does the religion stand on resurrection um, if there's no, because she was sort of saying she wanted a religion where there wasn't an afterlife, um, because it was more like your life is the life. It's the reward is the way that you lived it. Um, and the journey is the journey. And when the journey ends, it ends. Um, and so I sort of said, so then what is resurrection and where does that sit in that view of the world? And she said that it was positive because it was just that idea of, um, you know, you, good on you, you get to do more good in this world. You get to continue, like you have more time to live that journey, live that reward. Um, and so I wonder whether a vampire would twist that into, you know, they've got immortality. They're never gonna die a natural death. Um, and it's because they're stealing life force, but how would they twist that idea of, oh, but we're still here because we're still doing good. You know how, how that would be an available twist on religion as a social construct in this setting. Yeah, um, so Nyesta sort of said, do the vampires have humans worship them, or do they set up some kind of other deity, or twist existing religions to benefit them? I think the last one, I think they would twist existing 
religions. I think that that prob I think they would probably view that as taking less time. Um, you know, in order to indoctrinate people, it would be much easier to just twist the religion to say, have you ever thought of looking at it this way, rather than trying to set up a whole new thing and um, break people of their beliefs before building up a new one. I think vampires would be efficient like that. Unson J says, is silver banned? You know what? Probably. I wonder where mirrors sit in all this. Vampires and mirrors is always fun. Oh, Chase tries again. Chase says, I like vampire sponsored paladins who are true believers out there. Uh, taking down lycanthropes and upstart vampires. It generates good propaganda for the vampire lords and the paladins can be used and abused for political purposes. That's a great idea. Isn't that just so meaty? Ooh, and then imagine, you know, if we, we were talking before about um, it being a cool character background to be someone who's escaped from the north. Imagine being a paladin who's from this place who kind of believes in the goodiness of the vampires. Um, that could be dope. It's so complex. Ah, oh, I love it. Ooh, Apollo says, Vampires spread propaganda via oration. Big public gatherings where they make sweeping statements to the people. The rebellion is the innovation side of the central tension. Yep. Um, so they use a printing press to disseminate pamphlets for the resistance. Very intriguing. I love how that uses the uh, innovation tradition. Very nice. Big fan. Drink lunch! Drink lunch! Oh my gosh! A, a priest, a, a cleric, pins your soul with their life. That's that's how it works in my world. We've talked about it in a video. Um, they, they give a little piece of their soul to hold your soul in place. But a victim pins a vampire's soul with their blood. Oh, love that! Ooh! Ooh! Yes! Yeah. It's a, little, it's a different little bit of life force. Ooh! Stolen. It's they. St it's oh, I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. got some cool mirror ideas happening um oh um frozen scarecrow asks i'll just answer this briefly they say um what's the regional equivalent to a cross a specific religions icon does an icon form a uh it doesn't uh, does an icon as a form of warding uh, actually work i don't think it would um particularly this major religion that kind of is the central focus of it for this campaign because that's what my cleric made um we've kind of landed on shoes as being a really significant thing for the religion because it's the idea of you know you're walking your journey um so i don't think that that would affect vampires um but if it did imagine just throwing shoes at vampires wouldn't that be fun my shoe hit you um Chase suggests mirrors only in churches. A mirror only reflects the sinful. So the vampires are the purest, holiest members of society. Ooh, it's dark. I like it. Um, or Ulgulanoth. I still can't say your name because you might be a demon. Um, ooh, maybe there's a superstition against all reflections. And so that's why mirrors are banned. The reflections taint your soul. Um... Yeah. 
holy sin reflecting mirrors is awesome and I love it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, neat. So we've got some religious ideas. We've got the idea that um, fairly easily the vampires could have swooped in, sort of reframed the religion. So that means that a lot of the um, the high up, like, approved priests here probably are uh, part of, I mean, for lack of a better term, the vampiric cult. They're not actually. Um, but, you know, anyone who defied that um, reframing would have been gotten rid of. Completely. Um, so they were probably amongst the first sweep alongside the wizards. Um, so, yep, we've probably got a group, which would be the vampire cult, which wouldn't actually be a cult and I need a name for it so I can stop calling it that. Um, <laughs> Robin Winghood says, high necklines are probably not in fashion around here. True that. Or very in fashion in the country. Magnus asks, how unified do we think the vampires are? Because it informs a lot of how they act. I think they are... Oh, sorry, real quick, we got some names for the uh, for the vampire cult. The Sanguine Church says Rory M. Gal. Uh, real Needle says the Pure Blood Shepherds. Ooh, like that one. Um, Apollo, Church of the New Blood, some great names. Um, yeah, how unified are the vampires? I think in public, quite unified. In private? Ooh, nah, right? Right? Surely. Rorick says, if lycanthropes are a problem, stricter curfew and punishments during the full moon. I think that, yeah, that feels right. Rorik suggests the setting suns, but spelt with an O, the setting suns. That's kind of neat. Uh, Game of Pwns says, uh, is there one vampire who is the clear leader? I think there's one vampire who's maybe, or, or a very small number of vampires who are the sort of um, face of the regime, right? You know, like, they come out and make public appearances and have, like, they host grand festivals or things so that the public can see them being benevolent. Um, and the public can, oh, you know what it's like? It's like the Skeksis in the new, in the new Dark Crystal series a little bit when they come into town and they're like, look at us, look at us be wonderful and aren't we wonderful and great. Um, but, you know, probably fewer than that. I would say maybe four vampires that are like, these are the, the ones that everyone knows about. I want to keep it a big enough number that, um, you know, one or two of them could split off and try to gain enough of a following to um, kind of turn on the others. Oh, Robin, Robin Winghood just said, I think it'd be cool to have one reclusive vampire in the coldest region who's like frozen to his throne and looks like a mummy. That'd be dope. You right. Magnus Mendex, if the vampires are infighting in private, then what about the paladins? Are there individuals who've sworn to different vampires? You know, like he's the Knight of the Western Raven. Yes, because that's sick. That's awesome. Um... <laughs> 
Yeah, I like that. That's cool. That idea of, especially if they're vampiric sponsors. You know, you could have your your low level paladins or whatever who are just kind of sponsored by the vampires. Um, but then if you're if you're someone who really shows promise, if if you're someone who could really make a name for themselves as a knight, then maybe you're chosen. You're selected by one of these um, sort of head vampires, and you know brought forward, made made into a big deal, and you get their specific sponsorship instead. Which, from the outside, everyone's just like, oh, you got chosen, that's amazing, and it's kind of focused on the paladin, but from the inside, it'd be the vampires, like, competing to have the strongest followers, um, just in case. Iken, um, are the PR vampires necessarily the most powerful, or are they puppets to some sort of elder council? I think they're not necessarily the most powerful. Um, they might... It, it, it would be a tricky line to walk in terms of they have the favor of some of the people, you know? Um, whereas a vampire behind the scenes might have more power in a different capacity, but doesn't have that sort of um, benefit of being a public-facing figure. Um, so there are benefits and downsides to being the face of the whole thing. Because it means if it all goes to hell and burns to the ground, you're going to be one of the people who's on the chopping block. But if you are the person who strikes at the right time and, you know, makes a power move, you're the one who's got this this groundswell following. Um, yes. Bacon Burrito says, Chosen Blood Paladin. Nice. Good, good oath name. Oh, not the main character says, Could the vampires also have a geographic advantage? If they are in a valley, the mountains would make the days shorter. I like it. Big fan. Especially because I'm so used to vampire castles being on the tops of cliffs and stuff. Um... So this would be kind of a neat little place to um, divert from that. Um, you know, I, I like the cliche and we follow a lot of the cliche, but every now and then you just go, you thought it was going to be a craggy mountaintop? Hell nah, welcome to the valley. Try and escape quickly, sucker. Marvin Hood, whoa, vampires, I came in at the perfect time. All vampires all the time right now. Uh, F plays DM says maybe the church is mainly human and they use the church for propaganda. Yeah, I think, yeah, I agree with that. That's, that's kind of what I'm feeling as well. I don't think that they would um, turn the priests. I think they would... I think the priests are some of the people who are the most um, impacted by that promise of, of potential immortality um, and are most likely to be controlled by that promise. Algeron, that's not a bad idea. Um, what if there are seven vampiric lords with seven vamps beneath each of them and the populace are told that there are seven beneath each of those, but that last level doesn't really exist? Um, yeah, I certainly like that idea of um, misinformation deliberately being spread, that concept of like, oh, you know, any number of vampires walk among you, you just don't know, because there are mirrors only in the church or whatever, and so people don't know, um, and they believe that they're, is more of a vampire sort of presence than there necessarily actually is. Every now and then as I'm reading something, the chat jumps a lot at once and I lose the middle of what I was reading.
<laughs> Chase says, I feel like the vampires would have some forced social distancing <laughs> to spread out their feeding grounds. Um, but there might be some shame and stress with having a smaller rural holding because it would be harder to balance feeding and the maintenance of your territory. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because we've got to have enough disparity, just in little bits here and there, that it can push the vampires to the edge of infighting. Where'd that thing go? Ooh, Begurkinator says, uh, what if the resistance is actually a small sect of other benevolent vampires who have started believing their own propaganda? It's not a bad idea. Bear Wonder says, oh man, the vamps can twist the wine is my blood to your blood is my wine. Ooh. Ooh. Rorik says, uh, vampire alt boy to make sure that the human priest is staying in line. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, Nyessa, I agree. Um, she says, I imagine there would be some priests who are motivi motivated by the promise of immortality and some who just genuinely believe uh, what they're being told about the vampires. And yeah, I think that that's true. Particularly as you go from, you know, people who were there when the vampires took over, the further you get from that through the generations, the more likely it is that someone's just going to buy that story. Um, and they might still be, you know, the carrot might still be that thing of, oh, immort if you're really good at this, you might one day be one of us. Um, but it would still be a firm belief by then in that version of this religion, because you'd, you'd be like, I want to be a vampire because they are pure. And if I'm pure enough, if I do good enough work as a priest here, then I will be worthy of becoming a vampire and becoming physically pure. Um, so, we have some humans who are doing Underground Railroad stuff. Whether or not you want to um, have your vampire resistance people or not, it's up to you. Um, I haven't made a decision there yet. But we certainly have some people who are running Underground Railroads to help people escape. And we certainly have a human, um, you know, vampire cult. We did name it, and I forgot what it was. There was one in there that I really liked that I think I'm going to steal. Um, uh, the pure blood shepherds, I think I'm going to steal. So, um, we've got those two groups. So we've got a sort of political-ish faction and we've got a religious faction. Um, what, what would be another neat one? I think I've got a lot of sort of military sectors for some other cities. So for this region, it would be kind of neat to have, um, an emphasis Probably on the social. Uh, what would be a good social um, sort of conglomerate? What's I've lost my words. Um, you know, uh, if we have these kind of if if the setup for the vampires is you know you have these orators who who tell the propaganda in the in the town square. If you have these um, sort of festivals, these bread and circuses to um, show off the vampires and how good they are then I think there's a, a nice bit of room to play with a social group in there. Or maybe two social groups. You could have one that is kind of on the side of the vampires, you know, these these sort of pomp and circumstance humans who are tied in with the vampires. Um, or you could have the people who are kind of... Yeah, like if you had a circle of, of tavern owners or something who... Um, create safe spaces to tell the truth, to tell uh, histories that were passed down to you, 
that didn't involve this version of things um or for people to just talk freely and you know criticize slam poetry circles or or um you know abc cafe kind of a zones those could be a really neat little um social a theater direct flesh suggests a theater that's a neat idea Yeah, an arts district could be fun. Real needle. Yeah, like a speakeasy, like a like a zone where it's not necessarily organizing military action like or, or you know military action um in response but it it is a place where people can talk which is the first step you know like um like there might be groups who organize resistance through this um who belong to the political or the military sort of sectors but the group that we're looking at are the ones who kind of they do the legwork to have a physical space where people can go and they they make sure that as best they can, um, they keep out the spies. They keep it a safe place to talk. That is a group that I'm interested in. And a theatre could be an interesting um, way to host that or, or traveling theatre group. Um, if there are established theatres, I mean, oh, you could do something interesting in terms of um, the way that uh, theatre has been used politically, historically, is, is very interesting. So, you know, when Shakespeare would put on a play um, that was potentially politically jarring, you know, he wrote Julius Caesar, the tragedy of Julius Caesar, which, um, though about a historical event it was also about assassinating a monarch because you weren't happy with what they were doing um and so the who was it the attorney general someone um didn't like that didn't want to put on the play but shakespeare um built his theater just outside of the jurisdiction of that guy and so they couldn't come and shut down the play um because it, it it was outside of their bounds. Um, so they, when they put it, and framing it and framing it as a history, as being about um, Julius Caesar as well, that's something that protected them as well. They had this defense. They were like, we're just, we're just talking about Rome. We're talking about ancient Rome. What does this have to do with, uh, you know, the Virgin Queen? Um, and so that's kind of an interesting aspect in terms of being able to um, criticize government through art and through theater and then on the other end of things theater as a powerful propaganda machine um there's uh, again i'm going back to it dragon age i apologize but also i don't really in my heart um in one of the dragon age books uh the masked empire um there's a really interesting thing that happens where for some background for anyone who doesn't play dragon age uh elves are a downtrodden underclass um the empress of kind of one of the most powerful countries in on the continent like it's top tier um if not the most powerful uh she sort of she she took the throne at a very young age through some clever political uh games and she's a lot of people think she's maybe not um fit for the throne but she's been using her power as empress to kind of um you know, give elves access to university educations to, you know, um, improve things for them. Partly because she's, she's dating an elf on the sly. She's secretly dating an elf. Um, but then all this stuff is happening, blah, 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 lots of things. And, um, basically her cousin, who's kind of vying for the throne, um, pays for a friend to commission a play, um, a, that is ostensibly about this sort of religious history of their Joan of Arc Jesus figure, um, but wherein 
that figure keeps getting distracted because they have the hots for an elf. And it's kind of this play that is very deliberately um, framed as though it's historical, but it is um, propaganda against the, uh, the, the empress who is currently in charge. Or it can be, you know, seen as being in favor of, you know, this person who wants to be in charge, that sort of a thing. So you've got this idea of um, theater being used for political purposes. But then does that get dangerous? Wouldn't the vampires just kill them um, at that point? So it's like a theater could be an interesting thing if we play with both of those at the same time. If we have a, a theater company that put on plays that publicly sort of look like they're pro- vampire but on the sly they are using their theater space to host anyone who wants to come and speak freely and criticize the regime that could be very interesting oh apollo was kind of saying that theater with a speakeasy beneath it yes oh my gosh the theater puts on propaganda shows that are on the face supportive of the vampires, but are actually kind of subtly again. Yes, this is what I what. <sighs> Wavelength. Oh. CJ Boyce, 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 Bois, Bois, Boyce, CJ says, um, sort of division between highbrow entertainment, theater, speakeasy, poetry, art, etc., being decidedly vamp friendly, and lowbrow entertainment, sport and the like, being an avenue for uh, resistance to organize. That's interesting. Um, or the flip of that is also interesting if um, the sort of very common lowbrow spaces are. Um, sort of very face value, very like, this is it. Um, and particularly if if we do go a little bread and, bread and circuses, then the vampires are like organizing great like games and stuff for, for everyone to come and watch, all the common people to come and watch um, versus the highbrow spaces that are a little bit more, um, you know, they talk a big game, but do they get anything done? That could be interesting to see. Um, yes. Oh yeah, Robin Wing Winghood says, um, the theatres in the vampires' territories always throw shade at the neighbours. Yeah, they do. Absolute Unit says, I mean, let's be real, who wouldn't date an elf? <laughs> uh. Absolute unit. Are the weaknesses and abilities of vampires well known in this universe? Or is it more like Witcher where commoners may not even know that they exist? I think commoners know they exist. I think commoners know the basic stuff. I don't think... Like, I think people would be able to put together, you know, like, oh, they don't like sunlight. They're not fans of that, um, but like just by virtue of them holding night festivals or what have you. But I don't think they'd know everything. I don't know, like, um, yeah, would they know silver or would they know that vampires can't cross running water or, you know, things like that. Um, that is a, a question. CJ says, uh, so the vamps manipulate the entertainment that is beneath them to control the people, and the resistance has infiltrated the entertainment that is above their station to work against the vamps. Yeah, I think that, that could be a cool idea. <laughs> the coolest girl says, throwing shade seems like it would have a different context for vampires. Aldrin, it also helps their blood supplies if the healthy elite in the bread and circuses just happen to die. True. What if, you know, people can compete to, this is not a, like, thing that is necessarily relevant to anything that we're talking about. It's not necessarily, like, 
helpful to think about, but it just occurred to me, so I'm saying it out loud. What if you compete um, in order to like go and have your your audience with the vampires and everyone thinks that like once you win and you go and you have your audience, then you get to be immortal like them, you get vamped. But actually, they just eat you. Like, they're just like, mm, this was a really good one. That was real good blood. Um... Nimble fire. There is the common people-pleasing concept of panamin circuses. So, what would be the bread? That's true, what would be the bread? I mean, they're... I don't think they're letting anyone starve here. I mean, there's probably um, some kind of a food ration spreading something or other. Marvel Funk says, sounds to me like you would have a high level bard playwright resistance leader. I agree. Blood tastes better when the victim is in a state of euphoria because they think that they are ascending to some kind of religious nirvana. Yes, CJ! Oh, Twisted Cage. Consider a safe house where streams are led around on all four sides so that the vampires can't enter. At some point, the players could be inside and then hear the water stop running. Yikes. Um, the bread is bread bread? Bread dad. Um, braille. Um, so, that's kind of neat. I like that. Uh, who would our theatre company be? What a, what a, I'm, I'm gonna try and think of some theatre company names from the real world so that we have a basis. So the King's Men was Shakespeare's, um, theatre company. We have, um, in Australia, the ones that spring to mind are, um, Belvoir Theatre is the name of a company. Um, Merigong Theatre, you know, they're just kind of... They're just collections of things, aren't they? Um, see, the Blue Mountains uh, Clomo is a, a place near me, so, I mean, it just feels like, oh, going for a bushwalk. The Scarlet Players, the Sheepdogs, if we keep the shepherd motif. Uh, says real needle. Although I feel like the uh, the church has the shepherds thing. I don't know whether these guys would go with. It's a fun name though. F plays DM. The running tap. Oh, Clover, you're from you're from the Blue Mountains, are you? Hey. How is everything post fires? Cause that got intense. The class acts, says Yor R Rorick. Oh my gosh, can't talk. Uh, the Mechanicals is the name of the sort of makeshift theatre company in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Twisted Cage, uh, could the name of the theatre company suggest loyalty the to the Vampire Lords? I think yes. And if we can come up with something that sounds both loyal to the vampires and like it has a second meaning that's more underhanded that would be friggin sick absolute unit helsing and belmont circus i love it Drek fletch the slain helsings Ooh, clomo that is rough i hope i hope that things start easing up jeez It's tricky to come up with a theatre company name that doesn't just sound like a tavern name. You know what I mean? Drek Fletch the Harpers. I actually quite like that. Um... Chase the Lord's Mirror. Mm. The People's Mirror. 
No, that's getting a little meh. Well, see, um, Unsun Jay, I did consider the idea of it being a traveling company. Because I think that'd be cool in order to, like, spread the word or whatever. And it could be useful for sending messages back and forth. But I think a very significant part of it would have to be um, building a location that you can sort of guarantee to some small extent won't be infiltrated by enemy spies, you know? And I just think that that would be too difficult if you were on the road all the time. And they would come to new places, they wouldn't know the people, who's safe, who's not safe. Maybe they have a, a home base but they tour. <laughs> Andy Ford, the Harkers. That's kind of cool. It's got kind of the Hark as in Hark the Herald Angels Sing, um, but also the Harkers as in, in in our world, we would read that and go, wait a minute, you mean like Jonathan and Wilhelmina? Oh, real needle, the laughing stock, a comedy troupe that also knows the truth of the peasants as livestock. Oh boy. Yeah, so Rory M. Gal is seconding the idea of the Lord's Mirror, which is cool because it does have that thing of, like, um, both the outward appearance of, you know, we discussed the idea of mirrors reflecting, um, like, they, they only reflect the sin, so, you know, you've got the purity. So the Lord's Mirror, you know, it's got this concept of purity to it. Oh, we're so good and pure. But then at the same time, you know the idea of the mirror showing the truth of the vampires kind of is is a nice play on things well i missed one okay so a lot of people like the lord's mirror The tricky thing with the Lord's Mirror is that it, it does have more of an edge of the tavern name to it than the theatre name. I mean, I suppose if it's the name of the theatre rather than the company, then that works really well because, you know, the globe is the theatre name, the swan is the theatre name, so they're more objects versus, um, you know, the king's men, which is more of a, you know, here we are, a collection of people. Um... The other thing about the laughing stock is that a comedy troupe um, would come across as less threatening. Um, you know, there's this bizarre concept of like, um, comedies can't tell you anything like important and blah, 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 when oftentimes um, comedy has been the vehicle for important social change. I'm, I'm a big proponent of Dario Fo's um, theory. He sort of, you know, you have all these, um, you know, Brechtian type uh, theater people throughout history who are like oh we're telling an important message so we're not taking that lightly and we're being really dramatic and um sort of stark about it and then dario fo came in and he wrote he wrote fasts farces he wrote um comedies that were critical of um uh, fascist italian leaders um but he did it via comedy because he felt that no one wants to come home from a horrible day working in fascist Italy to then go and see a play that makes them more depressed. They want to go and see something funny. So it was like, let's write a comedy that also encourages social change at the same time. And I'm a big sort of believer in the power of that. Um, hospi hospitality and loan, the violent delights theater. We got some Shakespeare nerds in the house.
reflections, silver is, the polishes. Yeah, okay, so people uh, seem to really like um, the Lord's Mirror, so we can settle on that one for now. If we decide to change it, we can decide to change it. I do also like the Laughing Stocks. Um, yeah, cool. I like that. I like that idea. What's the time right now? How long have we... Okay, we've been uh, live for about an hour or an hour. And a, I, I don't know. I can't track the passage of time. I feel like we've done a lot of good stuff today. I feel like we came up with some interesting things. I hope you also feel like we came up with some interesting things. Um, so I might call it there. We've got, uh, we've got at least a human group who are, uh, filling in the political role, we've got a human group who are filling in the social role, and we've got a human group who are filling in the, uh, the religious role. And I think that's neat! We did some good stuff! We came up with some stuff about the vampires as well. We, we've been busy. We done did it. Um, Great. Well, I'm I'm very sorry for all the um, traumatic troubles that occurred midway through attempting this today. Um, I'm glad that I I seemed to at least be doing it at a time where a lot of people could still hang around for longer and we could actually get some something meaty done and put together. Um, yeah, <laughs> first full stream and half an hour of it was it was glitches. Yeah. Um, you know what? It happened. Can't change the past. Uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but what can you do? Um, at least we got to spend a bunch of time talking about vampires and talking about humans who are ruled by vampires. Um, I did get my settings right, or at least um, I think the settings I had before are ordinarily pretty all right, but um, clearly at the moment with the world set up as it is right now, this is the way to go. Um, so at least we can sort of rest assured that it should be easier in future. All right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. We did some good discovering. Good discovering, gang. Uh, I'll make sure to write some of these notes down so that they are not forgotten like the North was. Uh, so one last time before I sign off, I would like to say, I say vampire, you say North. Vampire. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I hope everyone has wonderful days and is staying healthy and safe. Alright, bye!